Welcome, and uh, we'll get started with our work session this evening. And um, you can see what our agenda is. We've got the budget, the calendar, and then we got a lot of questions and concerns, I'm sure. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and start with the uh, budget. Ms. Gardner. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to um, bring to your attention this evening. On Next Thursday, I'll be asking for the board's approval of our Fiscal year 2017-18 budget resolution, and at the bottom of the first page, we're I'm primarily addressing under local fund two fund balance appropriated in this budget resolution is one million one hundred ten thousand seven hundred fifty nine dollars and forty four cents. So we're just going to talk a little bit about how, when uh, from the spring proposed budget until uh, today, um, what y'all will be approving in the spring. The spring proposal um, had $301,362.54 appropriated in fund balance. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we uh, grew that by a little over $800,000. In March, the projections that we were using, and I can go over that or I can just skip to the overall increase in salary and benefits was just over $76,000. And at the top, and we were off a little bit in our projections. Uh, we projected 16.75 in retirement. The actual retirement was 17.13. To give you a perspective of what that is, $30,000 annual salary, that cost us about $120 more per year on an employee making 30,000. Hospitalization, we almost nailed it. We were off $20 <laughs> for the year. Wow. Um, and then we use a 2% uh, projection for salaries and the state actually awarded $1,000 for full-time employees working 12 months or 83.33 per month. So what that looked like as far as our 2% projection, you had to make about $50,000 as a 12-month employee to break even. That would have made it you right at $1,000 and we would have been right on it as far as um, our spring projection. So the majority of our employees that are paid locally are under 50,000. So the average cost, the average increase was about $500 for those employees. So that brought um, our salary and benefit overall increase uh, $76,000. And then the remainder of the fund balance appropriation comes from um, and I'm just going to go through these real quick if Dr. Garrett, Dr. Nolte want to jump in um, at any time. Uh, three additional classroom teachers, $150,000. And these are some high, you know, high level views. Uh, two 50% lead teacher positions. That was the addition at half addition at Riverbend and half addition at Meadowbrook. Uh, two 50% AP positions, and that was um, increasing the Hazelwood AP to full time and adding a half AP at June Aleska. And these are not those actual positions. These are the cheapest folks that we've got in, in those, our more expensive people. So if, in fact, the AP is not two halves. It's a full time, and it's one of our younger APs that's at Waynesville Middle School. Um, the certified supplement, we're only going to appropriate $225,000 and I think I talked with the board when we were going through the budget last year that we left about $135,000 on the table that's a that's a big portion of our budget it's about two million dollars so every time you don't spend a percent you're leaving 20,000 on the table so um, what has historically happened that projection is done like in the January February whoever's in pay status at that point for the next year well, there's a lot of changes that occur. Y'all approve those personnel changes in, you know, 12 to 15 month period of time. So what we did in August, we, uh, Ms. Moody took non-certified and I took certified who were actually in pay status. Now, if there were any uh, job vacancies at that time, we did not include them. And so we took actual pay status folks and, and this is, and brought that to the dollar of what, if we were paying that supplement that day, what it would cost us. And so we only increased it 225,000. That's going to run that very hot. If uh, I go over, you'll you might see me again in April. But I I have a, a little bit more comfort doing that than letting that much money lay on the table at the end of the year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next item was a clerical position at Haywood Early College. 
We added 1.5. We had an increase in local counselors of one and a half positions. That's one Haywood Arla College counselor and a half um, counselor position at Central Haywood High School, the approximate cost of $90,000. The ESL, we have local 54 money. And this year I brought that up to actual what that person cost us. We've, um, in that budget, probably for the last three, maybe four years, our local would have been over in our um, ESL, except that the state, we, ha we get about 134, 135,000 in our state ESL, and we've had the opportunity to do ABC transfers and, and put those higher paid people and, and do that swap like we do with AIG. Last year, we had, at the system level, we had a little bit of DSSF funding that was gonna shake loose, and I talked with Dr. Nolte, and when we got closer to the end of the year and said, can I use that for the overage in this program area and local, and he said, yes, of course. This year, we no longer can do an ABC transfer in our state ESL money, and it's the last year for ABC transfers in our AIG. So that's just bringing that up um, to what it would actually cost, and of course, if there's any you know, wiggle room at all, we, you know, my job is to use the law, I believe, says that my job is to use local money last to make um, the most out of our state and federal grants. And so that's, of course, what we'll do. Cultural arts, that is uh, the increase in those um, coaching supplements for band and chorus and oh, yeah. is it co Are they called coaches? Okay. Oh, there. Hey, Jenny. <laughs> and then finally, um, 80,000, and that is the band uniforms. That's our set aside that we've had every year. Um, we're probably gonna need to address that next budget season. We're probably not setting aside enough. Um, I thought that we only replaced one school at, in, in the eight years, and that's why we were setting aside $10,000. You gonna do something at one and not the other one? And, no, and I thought we replaced them like we alternated or something, and so we don't. We replace both schools every eight years. Well, that's not enough money. <laughs> eight years ago when we got uniforms, it cost us $97,000. It might be, we might wanna look at trying to alternate, look at it, like maybe, maybe doing every four years replacing one school and then four years later, and that would get them on a yeah, I don't, I, that's, yeah, I don't know. That'll be a fun. Okay, so um, yeah. at the end of, and just to advise the board, at the end of 2017, we had uh, $4 million in unassigned fund balance. Once we designate this <coughs> $1.1 million, that will leave us a unassigned fund balance of $2.9 million. Are there any questions? I think uh, since I allocate teachers, you know, with Dr. Garrett's supervision, most of that stuff you approved, those pay raises. The three teachers, what happened was we had an unexpected increase in fifth grade at Bethel Elementary from 98 to, uh, to 108, which pushed another teacher there. We had an increase of 12 in seventh grade at Canton Middle over the projection. Um, and then we had an increase of 24 in sixth grade at Waynesville Middle. So those were three teachers that Dr. Garrett, um, when you look at that 10th day, you know, you had to do something to keep us at a reasonable class size. And then the, uh, the early college uh, was cut $116,000 by the state. They plan to cut another 20 next year. Uh, we've been working with the college about some of the ways they can help us with that. Um, but what we had to do just to keep their clerical and counseling position was move those folks just to keep them there. Any questions for Ms. Angie? Well, that's a good job. What do we You've mentioned about the band uniforms. Does that need to be uh, closer to 100,000 or? Well, um, I t I've talked to Mr. Wise one, twice this year. He's not sure that they're gonna be actually ready by the end of the 17, 18 year to order those and pay for them. 
but um, I probably I should have been not probably I should have been more on top of that when I pulled that to look to in preparation of my meeting with him I saw that eight years ago it cost us ninety seven thousand dollars for two schools and I honestly I in fact I think I argued with Dr. Garrett I was like no it's just for one school eighty thousand be plenty of money <laughs> did I yeah that's <laughs> And then when I met with Mr. Wise, he said that it was for two schools. So, um, you know, that we'll, with this year's budget, with this year's allocation in that line, plus appropriating 80, we'll have 90,000. Um, and then if we don't get to order those until 18, 19, we could add another next year's 10,000 to line that. Item in there to pick it yeah. Up. Um, but we do probably need to kind of, and, and I don't, the four year thing, I, I don't know how that would work. I would, we would definitely want to probably be you have uniforms that were eight years old at one school and one school would be at four years old It'd so be like until you get on the cycle yeah I don't know how you can stretch it I don't know how you do that yeah. and I think it's kind of limited I think what mr. wise said if I understood him correctly there's only like three companies now that do yeah. uniforms I remember whenever it used to cost a fortune just to get them dry clean because they were wool back in the day. I don't know what the material is now, but I think there's some polyester blend. Just thinking back on my own kids. Yeah. No, when we went to St. Petersburg, Florida, we cooked down there. Black wool. <laughs> they were tough and durable and uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Lasted for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. Thank you. This is probably not the time. Next, Miss Jenny Wood. Valier. Getting better. I'll just um, put that on. So, at the September board meeting or work session, we talked about this, and you guys directed this the calendar committee to come up with two calendars and so what the calendar committee has done is do a traditional 180 day calendar and you've got that one in front of you and it says hourly 180 days because remember that we are on an hourly calendar anyway yeah. we just choose to go 180 days and then the calendar committee developed what I would call a hybrid of what we had last year that we recommended and the traditional calendar so I'm just going to kind of walk through those I'm going to go through the PowerPoint first because it provides some information and then we'll the last slide is um, a kind of a comparison chart and we'll look at that in with the two calendars in front of them okay all right so so this again is just the law the calendar law based on the state of what we can and we can't do and remember that Haywood County gets the calendar waiver that allows us to start the Monday closest to August 19th and will allow us to end on the Friday closest to June 11th I think it is um, and in this year it was June 14th so. I don't know if you want to read through that kind of quickly and then you can if you have any questions about the law it says the law hasn't changed um, in the last few years are there any questions about it okay. so this is a, a chart that tells how many snow days we've missed since 2006 2007 and you can see that the majority of our snow days come in January and February that is when we miss the majority of our snow the exception of a few years we 2010-11 and 2013-14 oh no sorry 2010-11 is when we missed the five days right before Christmas remember that and so you can see that we average about eight days total so um, that's how we keep the calendar waiver to start earlier is it ten I mean how many days we got to miss to be able to be eligible for the waiver it's eight. Eight. And we when we have a, our average may be a little closer to ten actually. Eight. 
2026. Yeah, we have our we have our polar right there in the last five years. Mm -hmm. so we're going to be good five more years, even if there's some kind of odd, odd numbers. It says in order to be eligible under the new provision, all schools within an LEA must be closed at least eight full days per year any four of the last ten years due to severe weather conditions, energy shortages, power failures, or other emergency situations. Any questions about this slide? Yeah. Do you always ask what we just said ago. So it might be 13 this year. I hope not. The signs are looking like we may have a wet winter. Yep. Okay, so this is um, a slide that tells the top 10% performing school districts in North Carolina and what or how many days they go. And the districts in red have the weather waiver, and the districts with the blue star beside them wave days or hours okay so you can see that the chapel hill and polk go 180 henderson goes 180 but they wave as well does chapel hill yancey 180 and they wave and then haywood 180. Um, and the only ones that have the weather issues or have the weather waiver are watauga yancey and haywood And just for information, Henderson, you know, they miss four days when, and they waive two of those days, and then they're going to make up two of them for the flooding earlier this year. Yeah. Any questions about that? With, with Union, they're, they don't have a waiver, um, but they're on, they basically do hours since they're only doing 178. I guess we're All on, of them do hours, but yeah, right. Um, and some, yeah, he used to do 107, I mean. Did you happen to see if any of these, um, especially the ones that go shorter uh, than 180, do they have longer school days? I, I meant to ask. Didn't, it, that's not something that's on their calendar. Um, when I pulled it up and when I talked to them, I did not ask if they went longer school days. No. Okay. Just want to get some of those out. Most go between six and to six and a half hours of instruction, but I did not. Okay. I can find that out though. Just write me a little note here. I've got all my info right there. Okay, so this slide is just what's happening around us, and I did personally call and talk to the calendar um, director or chairperson in each of these counties just to find out and talk to them a little bit about what they, they do. And I just started with the, the, the counties that are in our, our district or our region. Now, Yancey and Matt, uh, Mitchell and McDowell and Rutherford, they are technically considered our region, I think, but they're, you know, they're not within our western most counties. So if you can see, and I'm just going to go through these county by county so that you can see that, and again, the districts in red have the weather waiver. So in Asheville City, they go 178 student days, they waive days. And the other question I ask when I called and talked to each of these districts is how they pay their um, non-certified hourly staff that would lose pay based on the student calendar. And in Asheville City, the, Bunkle, the county, not, the, not Buncombe County Schools, but the county actually pays the bus drivers because they use the city system somehow. And they do not pay their cafeteria people. In Avery County, they start with 184 days. Now they average, he told me, they average missing 20 days in Avery County. So they do not start making up days unless they go below 175. And I'm, I'm talking this in days, but it's actually in hours. If the, just for better understanding, I'm gonna say it in days. They waive days and they do not pay any of their employees. In Buncombe County, they go 180, 
they waive days, they do not pay any bus drivers or cafeteria, and their TAs are only allowed to work two work days per year. They have one work day at the beginning of the year and one work day at the end. They so do not work any other. Their, that's their TAs on top of, okay? In Cherokee, they go 171 days, they waive days, and they do not pay. In Clay County, um, 180 waive and do not pay. Graham, 179, they do not waive, so they go 179 regardless, and they make hours up, so they don't have to worry about the paying. Henderson, 180, they waive and they do not pay. Jackson, 178, waive, do not pay. Macon, well, you can read all these are the same, except for their days. In Mitchell, they go 184, and again, they, they have a higher average of days that they miss. Um, they waive and they don't pay. Polk goes 180, they do not waive days, they make every hour up. Rutherford, 178, waive and don't pay. Swain goes 173, um, they do not waive, so they go to 173, and um, so they'll make hours up. Transylvania, 180, they don't pay, but Transylvania also counts their, what they call winter work and blizzard bags, so that's on the computer for the older kids, and the younger kids take home snow packets, and they count that as instructional time. And then Yancey, 179, they waive days and they do not pay. So I have to commend Haywood County and our school board on really taking into consideration the, the, the pay of those employees. As you can see, it's right. Now, with those that, you know, they're waiving days, was there a, like a, because I know you'll get to that when we get in the calendar, is there a stop? Does any of them have like a, a limit on how many days they're willing to waive or after certain days they'll start making it up? Now, Avery is the only one who told me they did. And so once they get to 175, they'll start making everything up. So that's the only but one. no one else. Okay. Actually, you know, because even like Jackson, Madison would be the next one who had a lot of snow days to make, but they don't waive any. They just take off their hours until they don't meet 1,025. Okay. So they'll start making them up once they're so, close enough to 1,025. Any other questions about that side? Okay, so here's our comparison chart if you wanna look at the, the two calendars side by side. Do we need to turn the lights back on or can you guys see, see it? without the lights. Um, the the 180 day count calendar is is no different than any other calendar that we've had in the past. Um, everything is essentially the same that we've always approved. So I don't know if I need to explain anything on that calendar because I'm, I'm sure that you guys are pretty familiar with that calendar because it's not any different. It's the hybrid calendar and the hourly draft um, that is a little different. So we'll just kind of start maybe at the beginning of the year and, and talk through this calendar and then look at the comparison chart as you go through it and if we have any questions, okay? So in the hourly calendar, you can see that um, it starts the same as the traditional. Students will start still Monday closest to August 19th. Then there's three work days before, before students come. September is the same. October is different because there, in the hour count, there is no fall break for employees. There is a fall break for students. And in the calendar that we have now that we're on, teachers have optional work days that they can use or not use to make up their fall break. Um, if you look in October, um, there is a mandatory work day which counts as the student's fall break, and that is our mandatory staff development day. So the calendar committee sees the importance of that day and, and what we offer for our employees and wanted to keep that day in October. There was some discussion about where to put that day in the calendar, but they essentially decided to, to go to the October day. In November, um, 
the, the same. In December, it changed only because um, in the hourly draft, we need to have some excess hours in our first semester in case something happened and we did miss so we want to make sure that we do get our half of 1025 which I think is around 512 something like that so we want to make sure that we had a few excess hours in there in case we did miss so they took out that's where they took out that half day on the 21st so by taking so the two work days in October and that half day right this the hours we needed plus right. a, a little bit of cushion and then moving through, you can see that that in the hourly calendar, the winter break or Christmas break is extended because that is the semester break. There's in the calendar that we have now that we've been working on, the semester does not end till up in January. And you know that that moves with snow days. With this calendar, the semester ends before Christmas break. Okay, February. Um, they did put a work day in February in the hourly calendar and in the same in March. And those, I will go through the weather plan in just a few minutes, but essentially those two days are to be used for weather if we miss for school, if we miss for weather. So that'd be the first ones to leave? Well, February and March. That would be the first work days, correct? And then in April, it basically stayed the same with the exception of adding another um, early release day in April. And um, we are allowed for, it's, it's a district, it's a district rule, I guess, of the number of early release days, or not even a rule, but it's been our practice that we use four early release days. And so one, one at the beginning of the year, the first day, and then the others throughout the year. And so um, they put one on April the 5th as a pre before spring break, and then one on April the 19th, which is Good Friday of next year. And the only difference from the traditional is in uh, the, the early release in on August, April 5th. In, second, in the second semester there, or second half of the, the year, that we're going to have a lot of hours. Correct. So, you know, we've got some, a little bit more play with some hours there. Right. And the reason that is, is because if we could start earlier in August, we would have a few more days to play with, but because of the state law, we cannot start earlier. Okay, and then in May, it's essentially the same except for the end of the year. So if you see the purple dates, that's the, the beginning on August 20th and the end is May 31st. Now our traditional calendar, it's May 30th, but we also know that we're gonna miss for day, snow days, which is gonna extend that. Here's where the difference comes in with the end, with the hourly calendar, is the waving of days, of snow days. So if you look at the weather plan, which is behind um, actually, we'll just go through this. Let's go through this chart, and then we'll look at the weather plan if you want. So I've kind of gone through this as we've gone through the calendar. But so with the 180-day count, we usually test 10 to 15 days after Christmas. So they test after they come back from Christmas break. If you go to the hour count, you test before Christmas break, which is something that the high schools really want and push for and like, hopefully. Um, in the 180 day count, you make up all hours. In the hour count, what we're asking is that you waive the first four days, which is 20, 26 hours. Um, the 180 day count you test in June because we extend and we make up all our days, it pushes the end of the year and you can only test in the last five days for high school and the last 10 for elementary and middle. Is, element, is middle the last 10 too? Or is it five? Uh, middle school last ten. Last ten, okay. And with the hour count, you would test in May because you would be testing the 24th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. And then you would have one day for makeup. In the hour, in the day count, you have less work days in June. 
in the hour you have more because you're waiving some in that in the traditional 180 count you get a fall break and in the hour count you do not get a fall break for teachers you get seven days for Christmas break and in the hours you get 10 days um, in the, hour, in the day count, you, teachers must be paid outside of their contract to remediate and retest because we, because we miss so many days, we work all the way up to the 215-day contract. So when they have to come back to remediate and retest for summer, schools have to figure out how to pay for that. If you do the hour count, you can remediate and retest that last week in June while teachers are still in their contract. So you're saving money or schools are saving money or however they pay for that. Um, the last day moves with the weather and then the last day would remain the same for up to seven weather days. Now this is the weather plan that the calendar committee came up with. It can be adjusted as, as can any of this um, at your discretion or your whatever you would like. And then there's more instructional hours in the first semester with the 180 day because you go you, you make up any days you miss, and then less instructional hours in the first semester. Any questions about those comparisons? I got a question. Okay. And I'm just trying to get it in my head. Mm -hmm. It may be as simple as what it says. Um, how many less instructional days do they have prior to testing? In the first Around semester? Christmas, yeah. Um, I think that's a total of three days. I would have to go back and I'll, I'll need to count those days up. I was trying to count. Yeah, I think it's a total of three days. Three days less than three. Mm -hmm. But you're getting your testing done before Christmas. Right. Not having to actually remediate coming back after Christmas would be a bonus for the hourly committee. So okay. that's the difference. There's a week of remediation then. Now, before Christmas, I don't know how they handle that, Dr. Nolte. What it involves is that it would be actually testing before Christmas. Everything would be complete before they went home on Christmas. Break. What I meant by that, Bobby, is a slang, really. I go. Because whenever you're, I go to end a neutral on a holiday, and I'm sure the kids do too, and so then the teachers will try to catch them back up before yeah, yeah, they actually go into testing after Christmas. It's my I'm thoughts. just trying to reconcile three days when we say it's 10 to 15 days after Christmas, and then in the hour count, it's, it's before Christmas. We did some oh, well. things, well, we took some, uh, the days. we took some work days and time out of the first semester that, that make, uh, maybe we added some days of Christmas I'll as well. I'll just, I remember that um, one of the high school teachers did explain this, and, and I guess this is where you have to look at what you want so you get everything done before Christmas in the hourly if we stay with the traditional they come back for Christmas you if you don't miss for weather you take that first three days to review because you have to test for the last five so you have to get them caught back up from what they and so you just take it or leave those three days do you want to give them up and not have them or do you want to use them to try to get them back after Christmas I understand the theory does that make that's kind of the way I understand it. Okay, so the weather plan is where um, the difference of the, the days of instructional time and where the pay difference is gonna come. So the weather days right now, if you look at the weather plans that are attached to the backs of these, they're, right now we make every day up that we miss. We make every hour up that we miss with the exception of some early release days or delay. We don't make that time up. Um, with the hourly count, what we're asking or what the weather plan suggests is that we waive the first four days that we miss of snow. So if we miss, um, and I do want to say this, so remember that we're starting the year with 180 days, so we um, going from August 20th to May 31st is 180 days on, on that calendar, okay? So if you waive the first four, 
that's going to be four days that we don't make up. Okay, so that's four days in the second semester that we're not going to make up. If we address, or in the first semester. Yeah, I was starting to say if we, if we missed a day in the first, first semester, semester right. we added that, but we took fall break away, so it would give us a little flexibility. Right. And that, what that means is that the, that end date of May 31st is not going to move, the four, first four snow days. Okay. Now, what the calendar committee did was added those two work days in of February 22nd and March 25th that we don't have the option to put in our traditional because we need to put them at the end. Because um, we, we could miss after February 22nd or after March 25th for snow. Um, but if we don't and we miss four, let's say we miss four in January, we're going to waive those. Then we miss another one at the end of January. Well, that's going to take March 22nd, work day, and we're going to move that. And then we miss another one on February 13th. That's going to take March 25th, work day. Then if we miss more than that, we start making hours up so gives us based on this weather plan. Correct. Correct. Right. I think that is on there. I just, it's it is. Make April fifth and not take full days. Yeah, you're right. I forgot that one. Seven days. It's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The calendar committee. You know, they looked at this very hard because they don't want to give up a fall break, but they also want to be able to test before Christmas. So when they looked at it as a committee, it was worth them t getting those hours to be able to test before Christmas rather than How many times break. you heard people say that February, March stretch is hell on earth? I've heard that more than once. Because there's no break in there. And you look back in every other, there's some type yeah, of there's break. Always, yeah. And, and by the time they get to spring break, they're ready for it, more than ready. That would help break that long stint up. All right. With students on on campus, they'd have a chance to do their work. Done. All right. I've heard that numerous times about, boy, that February, March stretch is tough. And on a traditional 180-day calendar, that has been true. There's no break. Right. Yeah, but if you look back at what the number of snow days we've missed, a lot of them fall in that February mm -hmm. month. Yeah. So that gives mean, them a typically break. Typically, we, we do get some day in there because of snow, but you know, it, it's also nice to have that, yeah. that break in there, too. Yeah. Monetarily, yeah, monetarily now, what's this going to affect on your uh, cafeteria and hourly pay to people? I mean, it's seems like it's less now than it was the last time. It, it is. We're only looking at four days now compared to, what was it? It's a lot easier to stomach the possibility of everything. Yes, that's, that's where I'm getting at. It's, yeah. So last time we were looking at 10 to 13 to days, now we're only looking at four. I don't know the money. It, it, it would be a max of five on this run. Well, yeah, five. Four, four days, yeah. You got a half day that you can. Could, could potentially. So two half days. On the early release. Yeah, they'd still get their time on those days. But for my hour, my managers already work the same amount as teachers, so it doesn't affect them at all. But for my hourly folks, it's $5,852 a day for their salaries. That times the number of days in the next. School wise. Does that, the ones that don't earn leave? No, that's all of the hours. Okay. Some that's of those $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5,
Does it mainly affect, yeah, bus drivers and does it affect custodians too or just, just bus drivers and cafeteria is what that would affect? How can you, you can't hold them harmless though. There's no way to pay somebody for not working either. Unless you took it out of local and just made it a bonus. I mean, you could take it out of local if you wanted to and just give them, like you said, a bonus. Can you not or give them a work day. day. A tenure can, but bus drivers are different if they're not actually working. Well, they're not yeah. traveling, yeah. Bus drivers would be the kids, but you could deep clean or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which I did talk to Todd, and he had some ideas. I don't want to speak for him because I'm not sure exactly what those ideas were. But he had some ideas about doing some training with them on that day. On those days to make up those hours. Or any day. This is a whole lot better to stomach than the other calendar we had. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm much better pleased with this. Thank you for your hard yeah. work. It's, it's a makes lot better where we're at. Sense too, really. In my well, mind. We hope it does. Yeah. Well, it does. It seems to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're wanting. That's the main thing, too, well, before we get it in before it break. Test before Christmas. It doesn't work. You can always go back. Exactly. Well, we can, yes. <laughs> And I'll say that, you know, the first, this, this whole notion in Haywood County came from that middle school because they did not want to test in June. They felt like as a school, all three middle schools, testing in June was not the best for their kids. So that's where the whole idea came from, that they wanted me to do a little research about this. There's a bonus in knowing the actual last day of school. Yeah, that's that's and that way you can. That's good for graduation as well because we can go ahead and reserve, get the times we want <laughs> to for graduation instead of sort of trying to see what's left over uh, to have gra graduation. I mean, if if the state now again, you know, we don't know where it is legislatively, but if the state would just give us that, you know, prior week, if we could start on the 13th, I mean, that would solve. I mean, everything would like miraculously come together and every year we ask for that and it's oh, yeah. it's excellent uh, this is a whole lot easier than the last one do you guys have any questions or any concerns with this calendar that you think the um that thing i'd like to know is the effect on the bus drivers i noticed one of the counties did pay their bus drivers and so if we could kind of get a number on that Sound like well, that county that paid their bus drivers was Asheville City, and, it's, and they may using, go to work for the, the city yeah. county. Yeah. I don't know what they do. Yeah. Well, at least know what the plan is for. Okay. Are they going to be able to make up those? That's How they're going to. Okay. Training or and I'll. Okay. I can ask Todd to present that. On Thursday. As in. What the cost would be to get associated. And then Allison, I'll do the same thing for the cafeteria. That's per day for all hourly employees, yeah. And they are, they still only get four work days, is that correct? So so you would give them extra work days if and I know they would want that. Okay. And I think they use opportunity to work or take a leave if they earn to Okay. Cuz I know, yeah, you know, that's that's one thing I've heard is, you know, the work days are can be important to them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. hey, that's yeah. human nature. I'm that's saying true. Well, that was something else. Remember, we were paying twenty-eight thousand dollars to fill the vacancies, and then the bus drivers—they were having a hard time filling the jobs. And the principals—you go to the schools, and the principals getting ready to drive a bus. So I don't know if it's going to be a big issue. I don't know if that's something that should be an issue that we should should waive this with. That we're not keeping them filled anyway. Yeah. I mean, really, I'm not trying to be negative, but yeah. it's something to consider in oh, yeah. the whole big picture. Sure. And I do want to, you know, in the past we've had that the board needed to vote by December, but last year, remember, we extended it till March. Now, the sooner the better for everyone, um, so that any schools that may have questions, that I can go talk to them and explain this to them, because it'll be a little change for everybody. Mm -hmm. Would everybody seem to be all right with December? Maybe give some as long time. As we have that, 
you know, play information and house and present it at the time. We can do we do a work session in December? Do. We may Maybe or may we not. can come back for one more. It depends. Depends on how many people want to participate. On the weather. Depends on where it snows. <laughs> Very short handed. Well, we might have a snow day. We might not think. I know it's not good. <laughs> it's scary. I think so. Any so, questions for Jeannie or any of the staff? So, if I take this back to the calendar committee for one last look, or I'll email it out to them. And just make sure I get any, if I have any other questions. Do y'all have any, any questions or? Are you just going to email the one out? The hourly? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have questions and concerns. <laughs> Let's see. Which came first? <laughs> Anybody have any other questions concerning the agenda items? I just like to say, can, uh, great job. A lot of hard work. I know it is. Thank a lot of hard work. When you start filling it out, you know, you think there's all this flexibility. You can do this and this and this, and then you start reading the law, and it just kind of, okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> then all the flexibility goes away. But thank you so much. I, you can tell a lot of work and thoughts gone into everybody's presentations, so we appreciate it. I don't think we have to. I guess meeting adjourned at this time. Yeah.